okasyon, tawag natin yan, the road to opportunity. So dito sa ating stagum, we introduce different skills training program. So isa sa mga programa about literacy, yung palingki eskwilahan. Sino yung mga estudyante, yung mga bata dyan na naglilinis ng mga gulay. Madrasa, yung schools for the Muslims to our lumad, pag-indo, para nandoon pa rin yung culture nila ma-preserve. Another program, balik aral sa silda. Tatlong taon at pitong buwan na po ako nakakulong dito sa Tagum City Jail. Dito po ako nagsimula ulit ng ano, elementarya. No, to think, sa kanila, pag nasa silda na, isip nila wala ng pag-asa. So with that, Mawala yung image na ex-convict. Bago ako dumating dito, ma'am, yung pagsusulat ko, kung yung katulad ko lang ang babasa, hindi niya mababasa. Tsaka pag bumabasa rin po ako, yung ibang mga babasahin, hindi ko po nababasa. Simula nung mag-aral po ako, isip ko po na hindi pa lahat lang ang rehas na ito. Kaya kung ano man yung pinangarap ko noon, gusto ko po, paglaya ko, may pagpatuloy ko po yun. Kailangan, eh, palahukin mo, kilalanin mo ang mahalagang partisipasyon ng mga mamamayan sapagkat sila naman ang tunay na beneficiaryo ng programa ng gobyerno. Kung wala yun, mabibigo tayo sa sinasabi nating pag-unlad. To begin with, yung pera kinagamit ng ating gobyerno ay pera ng taong bayan. So we have every right to voice out how we think that money should be spent. Civil society incarnating the voice of the people should guide government in what action is required and making sure that the aspirations of the people continue to be what motivates government and if not that is when civil society raises its voice so itong uh, panukalang batas house bill 3773 ay ito yung nagbibigay ng na enabling law para maisabuhay itong uh, provision ng ating saligang batas. Civil society organizations ay uh, pwedeng uh, mag-participate in the formulation of uh, the budget that would be uh, submitted to Congress. So we are a kind of accountability, kind of a watchdog, a kind of mechanism to tell the government that here we are, we are outside government, we are in the citizens' network, but we are watching you. Kapag nakikialam ka, Usahan ka pa na anti-government, destabilizer, may mga ganyan kaming naranasan. Ngayon, kung kami ay uh, may authority na mag-participate, hindi na pwedeng gawin yan. sa akin na isang volunteer na na-shock daw sila dahil nakasalubungan na yung mga bata na naglalangoy papunta ng eskwelahan. Malangoy po ako papunta ng eskwel. Ang uniform ko dinalagay ko po sa bag para hindi mabasa. Mahirap lumangoy dito sa eskwela kasi ma masusugatan yung mga paa namin. Nalulungkot po ang mga tatay namin kasi po natatakot sila na malunod kami sa daan. So parang na-touch ako sobra. So when I went back to Manila, I just updated my Facebook status na about the amazing story of these kids. So doon nag-start yung donation calls and doon ko tinawagan yung isang volunteer, si Anton Lim. So we got to talk about this. So we decided on a boat. These are all painted yellow and called Aming Pag-asa. And that's what we really want the boat to symbolize. A new beginning, a new hope for the community. Na po 
ang pagpunta ngayon dito sa paaralan. Ngayon, ma mayroon na kaming bangka, hindi na kami lumalangoy sa eskwela. Ngayon, hindi na kami nalilig kasi nabigyan na kami ng bagong pag-asa. And when you're irritated, sometimes you do not know what you are saying. Isn't it true or false? We will not judge you, but we are going to discover if indeed, in our own unique way, we are oppressing our students so that later on, after the seminar, we'll end up brand new. But the most important thing I hope that you learn in this afternoon seminar workshop about what makes an oppressive teacher. Mayroong mga kaso ng oppression ng mga guru sa mga pag-aaral. So I'm telling myself, we can start a program that would make teachers aware uh, that students have rights. So good afternoon once again. I'm Professor Dominic Makiran. I'm a faculty member of UP High School in Iloilo and the director of the Office of Continuing Education and Pahinungod. And we are here to share with you our free training entitled anti-oppressive pedagogy. Equity as the big picture. Diba sabi natin early this afternoon, iba, ibang mukha ng oppression. In what areas of instruction, maybe it's teaching or learning, do you see and observe oppressive educational practices? Yes, ma'am. This training is not really to hit you but rather uh, this is a way of uh, changing attitude for the better in dancing for example so sometimes a child would say no wala ko yung, i have no money I, well, our parents have no money to pay for our costume like that oh don't you know that you are an honor pupil do you don't you like to get 35 percent of course you're forcing the child where to join even though that child doesn't help financial support. Last July, nagkaroon kami ng focus group discussion at yun sinasabi nila na uh, hindi na sila madaling magalit. You know, I really appreciate you, dear teachers, because you are so honest with your answers. And as a challenge, do you take the challenge to become advocates of anti-oppressive pedagogy? Yes! With that, we rest our case. Thank you very much for listening and good afternoon once again. Bilang isang may kapansanan, gagayahin ka sa paglakad, tutuksuhin. So, noong year 2000, nagkaroon ng uh, pag-usap ang local government tungkol sa programa ng person with disability sa Carmona. Ito yung isang komprehensibong programa na i-empower itong mga bata na may kapansanan. Simula madetect namin hanggang sa mailabas namin, capable na silang mag-join sa normal education o di kaya papasok na sa entrepreneurial program. Nahired ako bilang uh, empleyado ng munisipyo, bilang utility worker. So doon ko uh, pinagbuti ang aking trabaho, um, utility, then ngayon po isang regular employee. Hindi natin sila dapat kaawaan, dapat natin silang intindihin, bigyan natin sila ng buhay, bigyan natin sila ng pag-asa. Uh, pakita natin sa ating uh, lipunan na kinagagalawa na hindi tayo papigat. Ang buhay ay... Kailangan ipagpatuloy.